Hello everyone, today we will be discussing arrhythmogenesis or how an arrhythmia can occur. So this diagram shows you the normal conducting system of the heart. It shows the SA node, the atria, the AV node, the bundle of Hess, the bundle branches and the Purkinje system or the Purkinje fibers. Now an impulse since the SA node is uh, the pacemaker of the heart, the impulse it starts in the SA node, then it is transmitted through the atria into the AV node and AV node is the only communication, only electrical communication between the atria and the ventricles. Otherwise they are electrically insulated from each other. Then from the AV node there is the bundle of Hess which moves into the ventricles, then it divides into two branches, the right and the left and both of them then they permeate uh, by means of the Purkinje fibers all of the ventricular muscles. Okay, this is the normal, uh, so an impulse will start in the SA node, it will go to the atria, then AV node, bundle of Hess and finally the Purkinje fibers. So how does this help? This helps, uh, there are two, three things uh, very important. One is the SA node, it retains the property of automaticity which helps in uh, maintaining the beat of the heart, the rhythm of the heart. Then the atria, they beat before ventricles so that the ventricles, they get all the blood from the atria. Okay, and then the Purkinje fibers, they are very fast conducting fibers. They help in bringing that uh, or sending uh, that uh, impulse all over the ventricular muscle at the same time so that the ventricles, they contract as a unit so that the contraction is very very effective okay now what happens in an arrhythmia arrhythmias can be classified uh, uh, depending on their rate one is a bradyarrhythmia. arrhythmia bradyarrhythmia arrhythmia means where the heart rate is slower so it could be slow due to one is maybe the impulse does not generate in the SA node or even if it is generated it is not conducted properly. So the SA node which was the fastest uh, beating uh, cell in the heart, if it fails to do its job, what happens? That job is taken up by what we call as the latent pacemakers and the latent pacemakers are present in the AV node and in the bundle of heads. So but these fibers they do not conduct, uh, they do not uh, beat at the same rate as SA node. So the heart rate tends to be slower okay that is one thing then in some cases the AV node does not conduct all the impulses into the ventricles so that leads to a situation what we call as a heart block okay so these uh, bradyarrhythmias arrhythmias are uh, treated by uh, drugs which increase the SA nodal uh, automaticity or the AV nodal uh, conduction so that I will be discussing later on. The more important topic is how tachyarrhythmias are generated. So in tachyarrhythmias there are three basic principles. So what are those? One of them is enhanced automaticity. Enhanced automaticity. What is Automaticity. Automaticity is the tendency of a fiber to generate an action potential of its own, which is fastest in the SA node. Okay. Now the SA node is under the influence of the autonomic nervous system by means of both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic influences. Now if we increase the sympathetic tone, what will happen? The SA node automaticity, it is increased. So the rate of firing of the SA node goes on the higher side and in contrast to this if we increase the parasympathetic nervous system it decreases the SA nodal automaticity. So automaticity can be enhanced when there is a sympathetic stress or adrenaline stress. So that could be one reason for enhanced automaticity. Then uh, certain conditions like uh, hypokalemia and uh, cardiac muscle stretch can also lead to enhanced automaticity in the SA node. Beyond this, there are some 
other cells which are normally not uh, automatic in origin like the ventricular muscle it does not have the pacemaker activity as such but whenever such cells are exposed to ischemia what happens is they tend to be depolarized now when a cell is depolarized what happens its membrane potential it approaches threshold and when it approaches or reaches the threshold an action potential may be generated so automaticity may be exhibited by some other site other than the SA node some ventricular muscle something firing and that can lead to a generation of an arrhythmia and how it generates is because it induces a type of a phenomena what we call as re-entry which I'll be discussing very soon okay this is one thing enhanced automaticity so automaticity of the cell increases then second mechanism for this is what we call as a triggered activity triggered activity what do you mean by a trigger trigger is you push the trigger and then something happens so this activity is something which is not seen if the cell is not stimulated it occurs only after a normal action potential so it does not it will not happen normally if the cell is not stimulated but whenever an action potential is generated then something might happen which leads to this triggered activity so triggered activities are generally not seen <clears throat> they are mostly seen in certain pathophysiological conditions or in presence of certain drugs so there are two types of uh, triggered activities they are generally called as uh, after depolarizations means the depolarizations which occur after a normal depolarization okay so there are two types one is what we call as a delayed after depolarization or we abbreviate it as DAD or DAD okay so this delayed after depolarization means it comes a long time after the generation of the first or the normal action potential and then second type is what we call as early after depolarization or EAD so I'll be taking up the DAD first and uh, in DAD you can say the delayed after depolarization what happens say if this is a normal depolarization when it reaches back and before the generation of the next normal impulse something happens here another depolarization happens this is what we call as a, a normal uh, depolarization would have happened somewhere around here the next action potential would have happened somewhere around here but the DAD or the delayed after depolarization is coming a lot before that okay now what causes this DAD these DADs are mostly exhibited at a faster cardiac rate when the heart rate is faster okay and second thing is the most important factor responsible for this is a calcium overload in the cell or in the sarcolemma so or in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so <clears throat> what calcium does is when there is an overload of calcium inside the cell you know there is one channel called as NCX which functions in what way if there is a lot of calcium inside the cell this channel will try to pump this calcium out of the cell and bring in sodium and this is electrogenic because it brings three sodium inside and pushes two calcium outside so what will happen there will be a net positivity coming inside the cell which might just touch the threshold and another action potential may be generated right before a normal action potential okay so so you can remember one bottom line regarding this DAD that is there is a calcium overload so calcium overload could be due to uh, heart failure or drugs like digoxin and uh, if uh, and there is uh, you can say there could be a spontaneous release of uh, uh, calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cell which is mostly seen in uh, patients where there is a uh, 
mutation in the gene encoding the ryanodine receptors. So those receptors, they even without the presence of calcium, they keep on releasing calcium ions into the uh, intracellular space or the cytoplasm. And that leads to activation of the NCX and uh, generation of a positive potential inside the cell. So that is one important thing. Then regarding the early after depolarization, and early after depolarization is what comes right in the middle of a propagated action potential. So if this action potential is going like this, and early after depolarization might be seen somewhere around here or somewhere around here in the phase 2 or the phase 3. So these, if they touch the threshold, they might again lead to a fully propagated action potential and which may be then conducted all across the muscle. So these early after depolarization, they are mostly caused at a slower heart rate. So when the heart rate is slower, there is more tendency of this thing to happen and uh, the, the currents which are responsible for this are of two types one is a potassium uh, sorry one is a sodium current and one is a calcium current inward currents from the outside so they can lead to the early after depolarization and uh, early after depolarizations are most commonly seen as a result of some types of antiarrhythmic drugs themselves and many other drugs also and what these drugs do is generally what these drugs do is they prolong the action potential duration whenever the action potential duration is prolonged the chances of producing an early after depolarization increases okay so we have one class of drugs that is the class 3 antiarrhythmics which are actually potassium channel blockers they lead to this type of early after depolarizations most commonly. So what happens is the QT is prolonged and uh, one type of arrhythmia which happens in these patients is called as torsalis depointus and it can lead to ventricular tachycardia. So that is uh, important thing regarding these after depolarizations. And now whether it is enhanced automaticity or it is after depolarizations, both of these they tend to generate another phenomena, which is the third phenomena I'll be discussing, and that phenomena is called the phenomena of re-entry. Re-entry means what does re-entry mean? Re-entry means something enters again. Simple. So, what happens is re, uh, in re-entry is the cell which generated an action potential, the impulse moves, it goes around and comes back to stimulate the same cell before a normal uh, sinus action potential comes to that. Okay, so then it starts propagating by itself in form of a circuit. So, it keeps on rotating and it keeps on uh, generating impulses at a fast rate without any control from the sinus node. That is what re-entry is. So, and uh, this re-entry, it depends on the relative speed of conduction and the relative refractory period of uh, the myocytes. So, I will be explaining that in a little more detail. It can be, uh, this re-entry can be of two types. One is what we call as anatomical. Now, anatomical uh, re-entry is when you have got a, an accessory connection, which is normally not present, but it may be present in some patients. And uh, one very classical example of that is a WPW syndrome, in which there is some accessory communication between the atria and the ventricles by means of some uh, muscular tissue. Now, normally there is no communication between the atria and the ventricles. So, the only communication is through the AV node. So, one impulse when it goes into the ventricles, it cannot come back into the atria. 
through that okay so it dies out normally what happens after a ventricular contraction that impulse dies out because it does not it finds all the tissues refractory okay for an impulse to be conducted to the next cell the next cell should be able to transmit that action potential if the next cell is refractory this wave front will die out so normally the ventricular cells when they are stimulated they contract all as a unit they depolarize all as a unit so there is no further movement of this wave front so it dies out but if there is an accessory connection what can happen the atria they have contracted long before this so when the ventricles are into contraction or into depolarization this accessory circuit might let the current go back into the atria and this happens way before the s node has to fire so what will happen when it enters into the atria the atria are in a conducting state so the atria they tend to be stimulated again so when they are stimulated they will again the impulses will trans, uh, traverse through all of the atria and again into the av node and they will come back into the ventricles so even before a normal beating from the sa node there will be a circuit a circuit will be generated which will keep on rotating inside this this is one type of an anatomical reentry now in this the simple uh, procedure what they do is they just ablate this communication and the problem is solved okay then another type of reentry is what we call as a functional reentry the functional reentry is means now you know the various uh, cells in the heart they have a heterogeneity of their uh, action potentials some have a longer action potential some have a shorter action potential so during the normal course of action all the tissues uh, all the tissues are conducting so an impulse goes nicely through all of the heart and then when uh, the ventricles have been depolarized they do not find any way but if a premature uh, contraction happens a premature uh, impulse happens like in an uh, early after depolarization or delayed after depolarization or increase automaticity what will happen some of the tissue might be refractory some of the tissue might be conducting okay so the the wave front it will take the direction where it finds a conducting tissue and it will drop the region where the cells are already in a refractory period so it will go through a conducting pathway and then it might come back when this cell is again after its refractory period it is conducting again so it may come back into this refractory cell uh, sorry which is now conducting so when this is conducting at this time the current will move back into this and when it crosses over from this cell the earlier cell might be into its conducting phase so it becomes refractory so the cells they become refractory and conducting at different times whenever there is a abnormal impulse going okay so it can induce what we call as rotors rotors means small circuits of rotating currents 